guys, uh, in this tutorial, we'll be learning how we can set up authentication with Next.js 13 and Superbase. So in order to start, just uh, start creating your Next.js app. I'm going to use the root directory for my uh, project name. Uh, I do not want to use TypeScript. I do not want to use ESLint. I do want to use Tailwind and source directory as well as app router. I would like to customize the default, yes, and I would like it to be at the rate. Um, and then it will just install all the dependencies as you can see here. Perfect, so it's not installed. Now, uh, as you know that in app uh, directory, we, we just need to cross check if, if it is configured here. Um, if not, then we will need to configure it. Um, I guess with the latest version of Next.js, which is 13.4, uh, uh, it is automatically uh, configured, so it shouldn't be a problem to us. Uh, so let's have a quick look. Next yes, is there that's fine. Um, and then what we have to do is we have to uh, configure it just to say next yes that in case if it is not automatically configured, then we say restricting strict mode true and app directory true. So just uh, like this and that's configured. Then we will go to the Tailwind config file here and then we see if it is configured properly for content, for dark mode, media stuff, etc, etc, plugins, etc. It's fine. Then we have to create a new file with environment. Local. Um, obviously, you have to uh, put two variables here which is next public superbase uh, URL and next public superbase anon key. I'm sure you have already created your superbase um, um, instance and you already have access to these details. So let me copy uh, mine and get back to you. Okay, so I have copied it into my local uh, environment file. Now, in order to support both the new server component and client component, uh, what uh, you need to do is to have two different kind of Superbase client. One is for the browser and one is for the server component. Obviously, the browser component, uh, you know, could use client side um, hooks like use effect, etc. So we'll we'll create two uh, Superbase um, clients in our um, source app directory so let's call it libs or maybe call so based whatever you want to i'm gonna call it lib and then i'm going to create superbase dash browser.js and then the next one i'm going to create is superbase.server server Perfect. Okay, so in the Superbase browser um, file, what we will do is we will import create browser Superbase client from the helper auth class. Now we forgot to uh, install the Superbase auth helper JS, so let's do that. This is the auth helper for Next.js. So now when we type again, create a browser. Oh, there you go. I think the browser, uh, the browser, uh, Superbase client has been deprecated, but that's fine. So that there we go, and then we'll just uh, create a Superbase instance here, 
uh, called superbase equals to create page browser client and that's pretty much it and then we will just export default there you go perfect so just to make sure that this is not this says what we want it to say okay oh spelling mistake there you go perfect now in the server component what we need to do is we need to import um, create server uh, component client and then initiate super base here and then we'll just say um create server component here and then inside this component we have to pass um, headers and cookies so in order to do that we need to get it from next.js so cookies and from next.js headers okay so it doesn't have to be like this it can be like this and it should simply suffice the purpose um, and then inside here we say uh, headers and cookies there you go and then we say export default base there you go perfect so both of our super base clients are ready for server as well as for browser now this needs to be exported as a function for headers and cookie uh, the reason is because server size component doesn't have access to cookies and what we will be doing in the future is we'll creating a uh, uh, middleware which provides the cookie access to to the server so that they can authenticate server can authenticate the user so let's move to um, an example of how we can get this uh, uh, into a, one of our um, pages so let's see first let's first see and then This is the browser window for us. There you go. So we have a uh, local host here, uh, which is uh, working, running, etc. So as you can see, our app structure is right now simple source app, and then we have lib files here, and then this is the layout and the page for the home uh, home uh, directory. Now inside the app, we will create another folder called auth. And then inside the auth, we will have whatever uh, pages or functions or uh, components we want. Uh, but let's... So, so a lot of people segregate component inside uh, a different folder what I would like to do is I would like any particular functions components inside that function so basically all the components for auth could sit inside the auth and then you know obviously the page for auth would be yeah, in the auth so for example if I say page.js and then it would be there um, but you know if you have common components which could be shared anywhere across the app then you can put it into the shared folder that's your choice um, I just like it to do like this um, so yeah 
So in the root layout, as you can see here, we have these metadata and everything. So we're gonna remove it because we don't need it right now. And we will remove this body tag here. We have the children here, just to make it more easier to read. That's good. And then also in the global.css, we have this root CSS, which is of no use for us right now. So we're gonna remove it just to make it more cleaner um, and readable. So that's good. So to handle our auth related logic on the client side, we need an auth provider, which is essentially a React context. Uh, and this component is a top level wrapper in our application providing things like user and session object, you know, um, signer method and a use auth hook to its children components. Um, this will be really helpful going forward. So um, what we have to do is we have to create a auth provider component and then include it into our uh, root layout. So let's create the auth provider uh, component which will be used as a context for our app and obviously this is a client side component so we'll be using this client let's import what we will be needing we'll be needing create context and we'll be needing use context We'll be needing use effect, um, use memo, and use it. Yes, that should be good enough for us. And then we will be needing our super cool use router from the next router. Uh, library. Oh, I think it's been to change to navigation now. So yeah, that's good. And then we will need our super cool super base. Um, browser. There you go. Perfect. So we got almost everything. And then I think we need to create the context in terms of, so we will export the events constants. So let's say events for what events uh, we'll be exporting. Um, we'll be exporting password uh, recovery, I guess. That should be same. I guess it should be password recovery. So then we will be doing sign out. Uh, I think it should be same again. Uh, then we will be doing. Um, Something like user updated again, same and I think that's pretty much it. These are the events we will be handling in our off. Um, we will have different views uh, for sign in, sign up, forgotten password, magic link, and update password. Uh, so we will talk about it later. Okay, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then we will just uh, define the context. So export constant of context would be create context. We can 
also uh, export auth provider which would be a little bit complicated uh, so let's uh, let's do that constant auth provider So inside this, we will have uh, session users. Uh, maybe if you want to capture the views, router access token, etc., etc. So let's uh, initialize them with set initial views state. Sorry about the ambulance sound, guys. Uh, not sure why. Lots of ambulance are going on. And set the session. Then we'll have it for now. And then we will have our user. View, then we will set view here with the view state. I can set it to null also, and um, we will have the constant router which we will set to use router and we will have the constant for us uh, for access token um, which we will get from the root layout and the props, props in here just to that we have it Okay, let's uh, intend that a little bit. Perfect. Um, as we have, as we are also setting up views, uh, let's actually provide the views um, uh, constant here, so we don't have problem identifying them. At a later stage, so let's say sign in and then sign up, and then for the pass for the password, and then. Link. and then update so I think most of them we will not need because we will be focusing on um, magic link itself but let's see what happens and this is for what password same structure so reviews and then we'll set it up according to our need um, so the first thing is we need to get session uh, once this is uh, loaded so inside our auth provider uh, after we you know define the props I think what we should do is we should use on it 
Let's load. Need to define a assign function called get active session, and we will define it in a way that it gets the constant session, which is active session. So active session uh, active session from our beloved uh, browser superbase instance which we are going to get from here get session there you go that's our constant and then once we get that we will set session very nicely with our active session variable and then we will set user with our active session user so let's check if we have it if we do then you set it with user uh, if not you we'll set it with null and then we will set the initial with false. Okay, so that's our get active session function. So let's call it on load. Perfect. So we called it on load. Then we have to uh, define a listener here. So Let's define a listener. Uh, it should be a subscription of this. Listener and then to our beloved superbase client of on off state change yep and then inside it we'll have our parameters parameters should be event and current session and if I am not wrong then the subscription listener should be an object inside an object so should be it shouldn't be a problem if we define it like that and let's see let's see what happens um, if we get an error then we will sort it out so inside our uh, on auth state change we check if the current user which is current session here is active with an access token then then we will say router dot refresh Actually, we have to compare it with access token here. And then we have to refresh. And 
then we have to just uh, again set our session and user using current session user and a current session uh, for the session and then we will just put a switch statement here which will switch between the events for example uh, if we want to go to password recovery goes to the view update password which we have just defined already here and then if it is signed out then signed out etc etc all these things yeah and obviously we have to unsubscribe so we will unsubscribe here and turn back the context Actually, the return has to be outside the function of auth state change. Okay, now that we have our auth provider ready, let's go to the uh, layout, root layout file and import it. And then we can, um, ah, let's uh, use the alias imports. Makes it makes our life easier. Um, it says that you know provider it doesn't find the source uh, lib superbase file. So let's let's try this with the alias browser. Oh, it's now saying it can't resolve the superverse JS. So let's uh, install it. You might have forgotten about it, but let's see. There we go. It's getting installed. So dev started, and if you refresh. It's gonna take a while because it's first load. There you go, got it back. Okay, so in the layout section then, we have the auth provider. So what we will do is, in the body section, we'll just uh, encapsulate the children with auth provider and then just put here there you go. So the instance is available across all the whole app. And um, the one thing we have to remember is that in, in Node just 13, the contact context is fully supported within the client component, but it's it cannot be created or consumed directly within server component. And this is because server components have no React state. Um, so, so they're not interactive and contact is primarily used for rendering interactive components deep in the tree after some React state has been updated. So um, that's why we have to make the auth provider as a client uh, component. So in order to do that, we go back to the auth provider and we see that it's already used client. So it's, uh, Client component. So let's go back, refresh, still working, still working. Okay, all right. 
Now, even though Authorward is not a client, it is now it is now as a cloud and kind of component, it can still be imported and used in the root layout, uh, which is a server component, um, you know, and. Uh, Next, what we have to do is we have to create a middleware. It is used to run code before a request is completed. So it can be configured to run code only on specific routes. So um, what we will do is we'll create a middleware file inside our source folder, which is this. We will call it middleware.js and inside this middleware file, we need to first import uh, create middleware client from helper.js and then we have to import uh, next response from the server and then we export a sync function called middleware um, and then we will have request coming to it. Uh, let's call it IQ. And then we will define a response which will come from the next response. And and then we will define the constant super base which will again come from create middleware client middleware super base client i think it got deprecated this is the this is the new version um, and then we have our request and response here and then we have our session which we will get from our delivered super bits session and then we just uh, return the response here so this is how uh, we have this uh, middleware sorted right so this is our middleware uh, file uh, ready I think instead of getting it back on the response I would just return directly the overall session here and that would be easier perfect okay that's great um again in the auth provider section just wanted to let you know that um in our get active session method uh, when we are invoking it inside the use effect um what we have to do is we we had to call the get active function here in order to you know uh, get the active session set for the states which we have here with us. Um, so that's done. Uh, let's move on to the next step. Okay, so now it's the time for real action. So let's move on to the real action. Uh, we need to create a sign in button so that we can uh, sign in our users with the help of our um, functions from Swabase. Right. So, what, uh, oh, this is how my landing page looks like right now. So, I'm going to go back and then the page here. And then I'm going to take this all content over from here. Uh, and then I'll say I want three links here. Um, sign in. Uh, sign out. And user profile. Okay. Okay, let's see if we can see. 
it uh, uh, maybe it's because uh, it's not a use client and we're using link well let's see uh, what is the error right now the error happens while generating the page any console logs can be displayed in the there we go so look what the console logs say Oh, it's saying the typer expected an instance of response to be returned in our middleware. Um, I think we are uh, returning, but let me check. Ah, got it now. So we were. Um, Returning this purpose like this. This was a wrong thing to do. I need to do return the response here Which is this one and then you can always have this Just you know Get the session. That's pretty much it and it should be okay. Now the error has been changed link is not defined So I'm gonna import link from that link And I think it should be okay. Oh, yeah, we have to define the HR information then. Uh, okay. So let's say auth sign in. Now we have these three buttons here. Um, just to make them a little bit good looking, I can always add this uh, um, CSS. Border two, padding three. Padding two is also okay. And yep, that's good. There you go. So let's copy this everywhere. And we have these three buttons. Perfect. So now we have to click on sign in and go to the sign in page and then create a sign in. Okay, perfect. So off inside dot page, we create sign in. And then inside here, we create a page. And then inside this page, uh, we define a React native, a React component, sorry. And then we say sign in. Um, and then obviously here we have to use input. And then in the input, we have to say um, on change. We have a text value which should be set to email. Set email. Um, what should be that? Uh, it should be the text dot target dot value. If I remember correctly, so for that I need to um, define email and set email and then use date, and that will come from React. And then I have to move it on the top because I like it to be on the top, and that's good. So we created this and uh, what else you need to mark it as this client because it's throwing a error so now we have the sign in page and dot sign in so let's um, create some let's 
strategy for it. Say order two heading three with four. I think we have to also define the value to make it editable. And I think we have to put it inside a div just to make it look good. And uh, let's try to do that. Let's see if it works. Okay, I'm thinking that this also needs a div inside it so that you know it has its own element. Unexpected uh, braces, so let's have a look. Okay. Oh, might be because of this. Uh -huh. Sometimes when you type fast, this kind of errors happen. Okay, so this is our signing page. Um, this uh, email uh, bit here so that's good now I'm going to copy this put it here let's say say um, and, uh, let's say sign in and then end up the button and then on change I it should call sign in the function yeah perfect so there you go you have a button you have an input let's mark the button as bg blue and we have it here uh, let's say 900 text white let's say y3 2 there you go perfect we have the sign in button now we have to define this function here which is sign in function console Correct. and the function should be sign in there you go perfect so let's see if it clicks and uh, okay now it's not working oh sorry it should be on click there you go click 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 perfect so now we know that uh, this is the function now we want to do is we want to um, sign in so what we will do is uh, we will just use a very simple method from our beloved sign in uh, superbase um, browser uh, instance super is from at lib supervised browser this is the supervised instance we created previously and what we are going to do is we are also going to import the use of uh, here from our auth provider component so we will say
perfect. So we have that. Uh, we can also import other things because we had constants defined there, but like now we will only need this. Um, and uh, then inside this, uh, inside this sign in function, what we need to do is we need to call. The super base kind with auth and say sign in with OTP. This is the one which we want, and inside it, we want to provide. Email, uh, email, and then we have to provide an object which tells uh, once the authentication is done, it should redirect it to uh, location. So for us, we will just say we want it to be. Uh, redirected to origin location so for us let's say off then what was the button we created here uh, I think it was user profile right auth profile okay so let's say auth profile and then that's pretty much it and then obviously it we need to refresh the page um, so for that what we do is we will import use router from next router uh, it's always this, this, this next and then we say uh, router here and then based on that we will just say router dot refresh perfect and then we can say out cannot uh, use await because this is not a sync function so let's call it as a sync and see if it is okay and then we go back to sign in page which is this one okay so now we are ready with the form and the sign in function which is simple with OTP so let's go back to our uh, form click on sign in with the once every 60 second okay that's weird um, but auth API error for security purposes you can only request this once every 60 seconds Okay, so again we sent the click button after 60 seconds and it looks like 
Okay, so fill the fill the and click. Okay, so click on the sign in button. Oh, you have sent you an email to log in. Okay, go back to email. Your magic link is here. Log in with magic link. Okay, so we should be logged in now. So how do we know we are logged in? So what we need to do is we need to create another um, folder here. I guess it was the user profile, isn't it? Uh, auth profile, yeah. So inside the profile, create page.js and then we just uh, have user details here and what should be the user details. Now, if you remember, we created this um, use of um, hook which was defined in our um, auth component auth provider that should have the details for our users so as we are logged in what we will do is we will get the user from use auth and then utilize the details of the users in here by saying user dot I don't know email or something let's see what we get so that's our um, profile page so if I go to profile page uh, okay so let's make it a client side page and let's refresh the page cannot read the property of null reading email okay um, let's see if we have uh, superbase um, cookie it looks like we do so in that case it should be rendered here it's not rendering Let's try to use um, the availability one and let's see if it does work. If the user is available, then render user email or not. Just render. There you go. So user details are here. You refresh, it's loading, and then it's loaded. Perfect. Okay, um, I guess the sign out button could be in the user profile section here. So I'm gonna go to back to my page and get the sign out button from here. And put it in this page here. Let's say margin y6 and there you go. What? No. I have to uh, okay let's see perfect so increase the margin there you go there you go and then to sign out what we need to do is we need to simply uh, utilize the sign out uh, function from the use of. So in order to do that, we'll just define another uh, sync function. Let's say handle sign out. And uh, we just uh, 
say wait and sign out and we could store any error if we receive any from this engine call and if there is an error then we should just console it perfect so handle sign out should be in this so let's convert it into button and button here and then it goes on click handle sign out and that's pretty much it so i think if we, we click on the sign out button we don't have the uh, the details because we have lost the the session here you go no session here so again let's sign in uh, email um, let's see console send we have sent you an email um, and go back and I received another one which is here uh, click in and then yes now if I go to user profile, I have the user profile here. So that's how you implement uh, user sign in and sign out with Next.js and Superbase. If you have any questions, let me know below in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. Cheers.